Hi, I'm Dr. John Perlman, Beverly Hills Plastic Surgeon. And I thought it might be fun since so many people ask me questions about what it's like to be a plastic surgeon. And, and many want to hear stories that are of interest that are not technical, just human stories. So I thought I might relate a little bit to you about my experience in uh, private practice over 30 years or, or more. It's interesting, few of us really see ourselves as being perfect, especially in our own eyes. And unfortunately, the people around us make it pretty easy for us to feel that way due to the fact that people are critical. Even friends and family who love you will sometimes make a comment that really can uh, pierce the heart in a way. So these little comments that we receive as children and even as adults from either other children, parents, or other adults can really have a profound effect on us, I, I've found. And there are a few of us who don't have a, a sense that there's an area of our body or maybe sometimes multiple areas that are weaknesses that we feel uncomfortable with, sometimes even ashamed of. I've, I've learned uh, over the years and have defined what I call Perlman's Laws of Plastic Surgery, which are pretty obvious, I think, uh, to most people. The first most important one states that anything on your own face or body seems 25 times more prominent to you than it does to those around you. That's just a fact of life. I've seen people who think they walk into a room and everybody notices that their uh, breasts are small or they have a bump on their nose and they think they're defined by that. And in fact, in reality, in, in most all situations, it's far from the truth, but our brain makes us feel that way. So Perlman's first law is that we exaggerate the defects that we have and um, and most people would feel that uh, we're not as unattractive as we, we sense ourselves to be. But the second law states that unfortunately even recognizing the first law and being aware of it doesn't matter. You still feel bad about yourself and uh, need to do something about it in, in most cases. So those are Perlman's first and second laws of plastic surgery. Um, I wanted to share some examples of with you uh, about cases that I've come across that I think offered a little insight into human nature and to some degree explains the benefits of cosmetic surgery, which of course is elective. Some people feel it's selfish. Some people feel uh, we should just play the deck of cards that were dealt, uh, but others disagree with that and I'm obviously in the latter camp. For example, I, I was never aware of the fact until I was on the Extreme Makeover television show that uh, there are people who are afraid to stop at a stoplight and show their profile out their driver's side window to the car next to them. I mean, that's shocking. But I had a patient on the television show who literally would turn her head away and down every time she came to a stoplight because she was afraid of being ridiculed or laughed at because of her appearance. Another patient uh, was uh, unwilling to go into her son's school because the kids felt that the mom was so unattractive that they beat up the, the, the boy, unfortunately. Just think of the burden that somebody like this carries in their life on a day-to-day -day basis, feeling that ashamed of their looks and their appearance. Uh, another example is patients I've met over the years who confided in me that they would never wear a, a skirt that didn't go nearly to their ankles or wear pants because they're ashamed of how skinny their calves were. Until that time, I, I never thought it was even an issue, but you will find that there are segments of our population where there's something that affects them so profoundly, it affects their lives almost, certainly the way they dress and their self-confidence, that you and I would think uh, would be unimportant and really not matter. Um, I think that's uh, a good point of discussion for now. I'll create more of these tapes for you. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments and discussion. Uh, some people will still feel that people have to live with their uh, weaknesses. I, I don't feel that way myself, and I've gotten enormous satisfaction over the years in being able to help people to feel better about themselves and about how they looked. Uh, it's my feeling that a lot of this uh, effect on personality is derived from childhood experiences, especially the parent-child experience, and, um, and even in adulthood when people who, whom we love and love us will make a, a comment, maybe uh, absentmindedly or maybe innocently or sometimes uh, meanly to uh, make somebody not feel good about themselves. So these are examples of how plastic surgery can, can be very helpful in making somebody happier about who they are. Uh, finally, I'll, I'll remember an example of a patient who was 47 
was in the exam room the morning of her uh, breast uplift surgery um, and pointed out to me that she'd waited 31 years to undergo the breast lift and breast augmentation to make her feel better about her, her breasts and her body proportioning. Just think of a 16-year-old girl feeling that ashamed about her droopiness or emptiness or whatever aspect she didn't like and growing into adulthood and marrying, having children and always having this issue. So it's so empowering for me as a plastic surgeon and beneficial for my patient to be able to help her to feel better about herself. And I, and I have to say it was quite successful. In most of these cases, it's pretty successful. Of course, if somebody's really suffering psychological problems, they need therapy, not plastic surgery. I'll certainly acknowledge that and the importance of that. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you uh, will be stimulated to think about some of the comments I made. And feel free to email me if you have any questions at jperlmanmd at gmail.com. Have a great day.